Trinity Sunday. Today is the day when we acknowledge and praise our Blessed Trinity. So welcome to our service this morning. And we are going to begin our um, service with We are God's holy chosen nation. We belong to him alone. to our call to worship. We gather this morning in the name of the Creator who creates time and space, galaxies and stars and planets. In the name of Jesus Christ, born on planet Earth, and in the name of the Spirit who fills Earth with His presence. Creator God, in this time we call now, in the space we call here, we worship you. Make your presence felt among us, we pray. And as we are gathered 
Jesus is here. So let's listen to that and sing along with it if you wish. to meet with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to be aware of your presence in our day, for you, Lord, are here now. Your Spirit dwells within us. We gather to bring you our worship and to offer you our praise, to be conscious that you walk beside us and we do not make this journey alone. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, draw near to us as we draw near to you and draw us into your dance, we pray. Amen. I'm now going to be reading Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swims the paths of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And indeed, how majestic is our God. And we are going to worship him now as we sing about his majesty, the splendor of the King clothed in majesty. How great is our God. The splendor of the King clothed in majesty himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God
come now to a time of confession. Gracious God, the psalmist declares that you have given human beings dominion over the works of your hands. All too often, though, we confuse this holy charge with having ownership. When we treat your creation as a resource to be used for our needs and our profit, when we find ourselves reluctant to count the cost of our failure to be your faithful stewards until disaster strikes. And so we pray, show us another way, O God. Holy God, your cry for wisdom and understanding echoes in our homes, our workplaces, our schools, our church committee meetings, our legislatures, and our courts. We confess we don't always want to hear that cry, deciding instead to rely on familiar habits, comfortable assumptions, and quick conclusions. We ask you to show us another way, O oh God. Merciful God, the Apostle Paul proclaims peace, hope, and grace are your gifts to us. And yet there are times when grief overwhelms us, anxiety holds us captive, and suffering leaves us numb with despair. We wonder how or even if you are at work in our lives, and we long for you to show us another way. Oh God, show us another way. And in the silence, let us just ask Holy Spirit to bring to mind those things we need to confess to our God. Friends, hear this great good news. God continually shows us another way. God's mercy is as wide as the ocean. God's desire to forgive is as strong as the mighty wind. So let your hearts receive the outpouring of God's love through the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Our first scripture reading today comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let your living water flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind. All my cares and burdens unto you I roll.
The Gospel reading this morning is taken from the book of John, chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. This is the Gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. There is no pain like the pain of loneliness. And I know that has come home to so many people over the past two years as we experienced lockdown due, due to COVID and that time of being separated. Loneliness, says Mother Teresa, is the leprosy of modern society. But even though we have been through lockdown, there are still very few who want to admit that they are lonely. For it seems to the world, those who are lonely are often perceived to be losers. As one person put it, with billions of people in the world, someone should figure out a system where no one is lonely. But the answer to that is somebody did, and that someone is God. And the system is called community. Community is another thing that was desperately missed during our lockdown time. And so this morning we're going to take a look at community. I'll start with a question. <clears throat> Have you any idea of how precious you are in God's eyes? Our glorious and majestic Lord, who set his glory in the heavens, deems each and every one of us precious. We might well say with the psalmist, what is man that you are mindful of him, or human beings that you care for him? Because in the psalm, we're reminded of just how small we really are, and yet we are also reminded of just how much God loves us and cares for us. Sadly, we have done a good job in religion in general, and in Christianity in particular, to give people the idea that they are never going to be good enough for God. So often, if people stick with religion at all, it's because they practice it as, never, as a never-ending performance, attempting to show that they are spiritual and worthy of love. Does that sound familiar to you? And again, sadly, many have received negative messages about themselves, and, and for so often, and for so long, and in so many ways, that they begin to believe the lie. But I invite you all to hear God's voice today, loudly declaring, don't you believe it? I delight in you. I love you. God is saying that to each one of us this morning. As we celebrate Trinity Sunday today, we discover how God invites us into the perfect community, that perfect community of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The community he intended for us right from the very beginning. He invites us into that eternal dance of joyful love, the dance of the Trinity. And that's the title of the sermon today, The Dance of the Trinity. Another question for you. Have you ever spent time watching dances? The way they come together and move to the rhythm and the beat of the music is fascinating. I love watching dances. The Bible is full of people dancing to express joy and confidence in the Lord. It's part of our human nature to dance. Even if we do it when no one is listening, or maybe after that second glass of wine, dancing has a way of bringing people together. 
as those who join the dance must move together as one in order for the dance to continue. I think that watching people dance can actually help us understand the somewhat tricky concept of the Trinity. The Trinity is an eternal dance of Father, Son and Spirit, sharing mutual love, honour, happiness, joy and respect. The Trinity is all about self-emptying love. God reveals his innermost nature through a continuous dance of self-emptying. An outpouring of love from father to son, from son to spirit, and from spirit back to the father. God's action of creation means that God is inviting more and more beings into this eternal dance of joy. You see, sin means that people are stepping out from that dance, stepping out of the dance, stomping on feet instead of moving with grace and rhythm and reverence. Then in Jesus, God enters creation to restore the rhythm and the beauty again. I have no intention of attempting a complete and full explanation of the Trinity because I'm not able It is a mystery, a beautiful mystery that perhaps one day we will understand. However, I would like to offer one word that may help us to better understand the Trinity and how it might actually help us as a community. And that word is perichoresis. This word is often translated as rotation. In this understanding, The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit not only embrace one another, but they also permeate, contain, and exist in one another. Asking you to use your imagination, picture a circle. A circle dance in which members join hands and slowly begin to spin about the room, each maintaining their own identity but becoming inseparably part of the dance that is taking place. The triune God is is an eternal circle of the dance of the Father, Son, and Spirit. In this dance, the three divine persons of the one God have loved one another and been in relationship with one another for all eternity. Through this never-ending dance, as John Ortberg says in his book, Everyone is Normal Until You Get to Know Them, which is an absolutely delightful book, as he says, the divine persons exist so intimately with one another, for one another, and in one another, that they constitute a single, unique, and complete unity by themselves. The life of God is a life of self-giving and other receiving. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are so close that Jesus can say, the Father is in me and I am in the Father. The life of the Trinity is an unceasing offering and receiving of self-giving, self-emptying love. Frederick Bruner describes this as the shyness of love. The Spirit draws attention not to himself, but to the Son. The Spirit comes in the Son's name. He glorifies the Son. Look at him, listen to him, learn from him, worship him. This is the shyness of the Holy Spirit pointing to the sun. And when we look at the sun, when we look at Jesus, we find he didn't walk around saying, look at me, I'm the greatest. Rather, he said, I glorify myself. Sorry, if I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. He said he came not to serve, not to be served, but to serve. He submitted to the Spirit, who we know, according to Mark, 
led him to the desert. And he told his father during that intense struggle in the garden, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus pointed to the Father to glorify the Father. Jesus too has this shyness. Then there is the Father. Twice in the Synoptic Gospels we hear his voice, once at Jesus' baptism and again at the Transfiguration. Both times his message was, This is my precious Son. I am deeply pleased with him. Listen to him. It's noteworthy, Bruno writes, that this voice does not say, look at me and listen to me too, after listening to him. Don't forget that I am here. Don't be taken up just by my son. No, the father doesn't say that. That is because the father is shy too. The whole precious trinity is shy, each member pointing faithfully and selflessly to the other in the gracious circle of a dance. The circle, this circle we're talking about of Father, Son and Holy Spirit is the only one that is truly self-sufficient and totally self-sufficient. All our broken circles ultimately find their healing there. We all need to be held. If we're honest with ourselves, we all need to be held. And in this intimate circle of love that we are invited into, we are held. God created us human beings because he was so in love with community that he wanted a world full of people to share it with. He wanted to invite them all to the dance. So how do we join this eternal dance? Paul says in today's reading from Romans that it is through our Lord Jesus Christ that we have gained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God and not only that, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. So we come into the dance. We see in the incarnation of Jesus Christ, who takes on our humanity, God invites us into the dance of divinity. We come into this dance just as God participates in the dance as community, with others that are seated here today or that are watching, us, or watching with us today, with all, all Christians across time and across the world. We have been invited into this fellowship of love. If we remember Jesus' prayer for believers in John 17, he says, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message so that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me, and I am in you. May they also be in us, so the world may believe that you sent me. A community of loving people is God's signature. The Trinity brings the statement that God is love into reality. The human heart is forever empty if it's closed in upon itself. We know that. But in community, a heart becomes alive. To experience community is to know the joy of belonging, the delight of being known and loved, the opportunity of giving and growing, and the safety of finding a true home. But we must realize that there is an enormous price to be paid for our admittance to this dance. The Son will go to the cross. The Father, who had known nothing from all eternity but intimate relationship with his Son, will now see him suffer the anguish and the alienation of sin. And the Spirit comes to earth and, and allows himself to be quenched and to be grieved by human beings. So at enormous cost to every member of the Trinity, you and I have been welcomed to the eternal circle to be held in the heart of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. 
At this point, you might feel that life isn't allowing you to dance. But don't rely on feelings. Take time. Take time in the presence of God, in the silence, in nature, and let his peace draw you into the circle and the dance of love. You are now invited to take your place in the eternal dance, the eternal self-giving love. Every person you see, every moment of your life is an opportunity to live in and extend the fellowship of the Trinity. Every time you forgive someone who hurt you, or you encourage someone, or you extend compassion, or you confront in love, or you open your heart to, inf- to a friend or reconcile with an enemy, or you devote yourself to a child, you align yourself within the community of God. That was Jesus' path. He did not hoard, he did not cling, not even to life itself. Everything can be embraced, but the catch is not to cling to anything. And that's what Jesus did. Not my will, but yours be done, he said to the Father. Our dance together in God, our community as the body of Christ, will allow us to do things together that we could never imagine on our own. In this dance, we will, lo- we will learn to love God and to love one another. And together, we can make a difference in this world. Of course, we will occasionally step on someone else's foot or step out, in line, out of line in the dance. But the beauty of this dance is that God is in control and he always invites us back. Allowing the love of God to bind us together, just as it binds Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, will bring more joy and fullness to our lives and our ministries than anything else. All we have to do is to accept the invitation of the triune God and step out onto the dance floor. With billions of people in the world, someone should figure out a system where no one is lonely. Someone did, and he invites you into the dance. Shall we pray? Lord, you have poured your spirit into the church through the miracle of Pentecost. Help us now to build on that, as did the disciples, so that every day we may see your son more clearly, love him more dearly, and to follow him more nearly, drawn into the dance of communion with you and the Holy Spirit. Inspire us to give ourselves freely to your will for the world and find our true selves in belonging together as members of your community as we endeavor to live out the gospel. Creator God, source of all love, life, when we look at creation, the moon and stars, majestic in the heavens, the eagle soaring in the air and the dolphin dancing through the sea. Who are we, human beings, that you care so much for us? Stewards of the planet you give us as our home, how awesome a task you trust to our hands, how fragile and beautiful is the good earth. Amid the immensities of the universe, you seek us to be your partners. Lord, help us not to fail you. Lord, we speak of the mysteries of the Trinity, but one thing above all you have made crystal clear to us. We are to move constantly out towards one another in self-giving, living, and being in that perfect oneness we call by the name of love. Help us to realize that it is truly in giving that we receive and that in serving one another, we are serving you. Lord, remind us always that it is you, that it is in you that we are made whole. When we feel discouraged and think our work in vain, you send Holy Spirit to revive our hopes. We pray for all those who are in physical pain, as well as facing discouraged hopes. 
We pray for those who are facing terminal illness, that they may have strength to enjoy, to endure and find acceptance and peace. Lord, we pray for all those whom we love but see no more. May they rest in peace and rise in glory, buoyed up on the sea of your eternal love. We pray for those who suffer injustice and who are taken advantage of. We bring all these people into your circle of love, that they may experience the outpouring of your self-emptying love. Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we love you and adore you. And with the seraphs we say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, and the whole world is full of his glory. Amen. And shall we say together the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So after hearing our wonderful invitation to the dance of the Trinity, we are going to end our service now by inviting God to teach us to dance to the beat of his heart and to move in the power of his spirit. Spirit, teach me to walk in the light of your presence. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Teach me to love with your heart of compassion. Teach me to trust in the word of your promise. Teach me to hope in the day of your coming.
So as we conclude the service, we pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, send us out to live lives that glorify you. Help us to be people of peace. Empower us to recognize your call in our families, in our communities, in our workplaces and schools, in our churches and in our world. Teach us the rhythm of your dance, we pray. Amen. So go now in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You wrote the